Okay, so a little bit more about dog collars, but these are collars that we do not recommend for use in dogs at all. Um, however, it's very important that you know about them and that you understand why we don't recommend them. So the first one is called a prong collar. Okay, so you will recognize perhaps from just now that there's a semi-slip component to this collar but on the actual inside of the collar we have these metal prongs and the way that people use it unfortunately is on the dog's neck like that with the lead attached over here and as you can see when you tighten it those prongs go right into the skin of the dog now this is much more commonly used than you may be aware and I think it's quite obvious that having metal prongs stick into the dog's skin cannot be good for the dog. People get this kind of thing when they have difficulty controlling dogs, either dogs that pull on a lead and people can't control them or dogs that are really aggressive. And, um, that seems to be the only way they can control the dog. But the problem is that because of the pain caused by the prongs, and it's the same thing for a normal slip collar as well, um, because of that pain and discomfort, the dog actually becomes fearful. And it's a very bad experience for the dog, and the dog tries to get away. And because it often feels trapped, it's on a lead, it can't get away from this discomfort and pain, it may then become aggressive towards the person that's handling it. So you can see that um, even though for a short time period it may be successful in achieving what people are trying to achieve, it is actually not good for the relationship between the dog and the handler and the dog and other people because they then generalize this fear of people to other people as well and they can easily show aggression then to other people too. And, but really from the welfare perspective, um, it is not right and acceptable in the 21st century for us to be using this kind of barbaric tool to subjugate an animal to do what we want it to do. There are far better ways of doing it. You will and may already have learned in class about positive reinforcement and how we can get animals to really cooperate with us if we just understand how they think and how they communicate. I want to show you some other collars. This one is an electric dog collar or electronic training device as it is also known. Um, they don't all look exactly the same, okay? But basically what they do is they, the, the dog wears it around its neck and at a certain point the little device here delivers a shock an electric shock to the dog's neck okay so it is a painful stimulus um, it is used as a form of punishment so that when a dog does something that it's not meant to be doing this electronic shock is meant to stop that behavior from happening um, it is used for a variety of purposes the probably most common one is the anti-bark collar and it will deliver a shock every time the vibration of the bark is picked up by the collar. So it is not controlled externally. It is every time the dog barks, it gets a shock. Now this can be effective and it can teach the dog not to bark. But unfortunately, there's a whole lot of other things we also have to keep in mind. The first thing is that a dog actually often needs to bark. All barking is not nuisance barking. And now we are with this device actually suppressing even normal barking behavior. And that's not good because when an animal is stopped from doing its normal behavior, it becomes very stressed and agitated and may actually develop other problems. The other problem is that this shock may happen at the same time that another event happens in the dog's environment. And the dog may actually associate the shock with that other thing and not its own bark. Okay, so if a little child happens to be walking past the moment the shock is delivered, the dog may think it was the child that did it 
And from that moment onwards, the dog may then become aggressive to children. So this is just one or two examples of how it can go very, very wrong using this kind of device. But the main reason we don't recommend it, um, apart from it being painful and therefore not right to administer to a dog, um, is that there are other ways of dealing with these problems. A dog that barks too much does it for a reason and we need to find out what is that reason and then deal with it. So always look for the underlying reason. Don't just try and treat the symptom, the barking, because it won't work for a long, it, it won't necessarily be something that will be effective over a long time period. Okay, so the, this is the electronic shock collar. There is another similar type of collar, which is called um, a citronella collar. And what this one does is it sprays a little squirt of citronella oil every time the dog barks. So it works similar to the electronic anti-barking collar, um, but instead of giving a shock, it squirts citronella oil, which is less painful and less scary than the electric shock. However, we still have the problem that we're only treating the symptom and we also find very often that the dogs will only stop barking while they're wearing the actual device rather than at all times. Um, so it's still not an ideal device to use. Um, you also get a model that just sprays a spray of water, squirt of water. So even though the water and the citronella oil is not as bad as the electronic shock, it's still the same principle. We're using an aversive stimulus, something unpleasant. To try and stop a behavior. There are better ways to change dog's behavior. Um, that covers all our less nice dog collars.